Hi, my name is Tara. I am a student at the Ben and Mate Fish College of Pharmacy. Today I am presenting a Journal Club article. Um, so my article is uh, about the, it's a article called Once Weekly Semaglutide in Adults with Overweight or Obesity. Um, the objective was to evaluate the use of semaglutide along with lifestyle changes effect for losing weight for patients who are overweight or obese and do not have diabetes. Uh, this was funded by Novo Nordisk. So the background information. Obesity today is seen as a global health challenge and considered a chronic disease. Obesity is only the beginning and can lead to other health complications such as type 2 diabetes, liver disease, cardiovascular disease, and can even reduce one's life expectancy. It can also cause more of a likelihood of hospitalization need, mechanical ventilation needed, and an increased likelihood of death due to the global pandemic of COVID-19. Guidelines recommend currently first line for obesity therapy of lifestyle changes, including both exercise and diet, as well as pharmacotherapy added. The current pharmacotherapy available to this day is still of limited data and results of its effect, efficacy, safety, and overall cost of its medi the medication. So a 68-week trial was conducted to evaluate the use of semaglutide, which is a glucagon-like peptide 1 analog, which is typically used for the treatment of type 2 diabetes. The dose administered for type 2 diabetes is 1 mg sub-Q once weekly, whereas for obesity, um, this global, whereas for obesity, this global third trial is evaluating the dose of 2.4 mg um, sub-Q once weekly. So for methods, the trial design um, completed was a randomized double-blind placebo-controlled trial. Uh, patients were randomized to receive semaglutide 2.4 mg sub-Q once weekly in a 2 to 1 ratio with a placebo for 68 weeks along with lifestyle changes. Uh, inclusion criteria, so you had to be 18 years or older who have tried at least one uh, at least once to diet and lose weight but was unsuccessful. You must have a BMI greater than 30 or greater than 27 along with at least one health related, uh, or sorry, one weighted weight related COVID extent condition. Exclusion criteria, so um, anyone that has diabetes, whether it be type one or type two, your hemoglobin levels of 48 millimoles per, per mole or more, so 6.5%. Um, if you have any history of chronic pancreatitis, uh, you must not have had acute pancreatitis in the last 180 days before enrolling. Uh, you must not have had any previous obesity surgery. And you must not have had any use of obesity medications to aid in your weight in the last 90 days before enrolling. So in order to assess the efficacy, so our primary endpoint, we had two. So you had your percent change of weight throughout the 68 weeks. And we wanted to successfully reduce the weight by 5% or more throughout the 68 weeks. Um, some of the secondary endpoints, so reducing the body weight by 10 to 15% or greater. Uh, we're looking for a reduction in the waist circumference. We're looking for an improvement in the systolic blood pressure. We're looking for an improvement on the 36 item short form health survey, which is the SF36 as well as the impact weight of quality of life light clinical trials version, which is the IWQOL light CT, which both are testing the physical function. And lastly, any adverse effects or any deaths. As far as statistical analysis, so we're looking at, um, for an intention to treat principle and we have a two-sided 95% confidence intervals along with corresponding p-values of less than 0.05% for significance. The results of this um, trial All right, so the total number of participants that were included, um, we had 100, one, sorry, 1,961 participants. Um, out of those 1,961 participants, the total number given the semaglutide was 1,306, whereas the total number given a placebo was 655. Um, as far as the percent that went through the entire trial, it was 94.3%. 91.2% completed the weight evaluation at week 68. So baseline characteristics. So the um, what the population looked like, we had 74.1% uh, of them were female. So a large uh, majority of them were female. We had a 75.1% of a white demographic. Um, of these uh, patients, we had 43.7% were currently pre-diabetic. So they are not, they don't have any diabetes as that was an exclusion, but um, almost half of them, so the 43.7% are pre-diabetic. 75% um, of them uh, had at least one or more um, other health existing uh, conditions. 
The average age of this trial was 46 year olds. The average weight was 105.3 kilograms. Our average BMI was 37.9. And as far as the average waist circumference, it was 114.7 centimeters. So our treatment efficacy. So in regards to our primary outcomes first. So we had two primary outcomes of the percent change of weight and the total weight loss. So in terms of the semaglutide, so our patients who took semaglutide, they did experience an average of 14.9% weight loss and about 15.3 kilograms were lost at the week 68 marker. As far as the placebo group, we had 2.4% of weight loss and about 2.6 kilograms lost, um, uh, lost at the end of the 68 week marker. The percent weight loss had a p-value less than 0.001% of significance. As far as secondary outcomes, so this is in terms of semaglutide versus your placebo. So body weight reduction of at least 10%, there was a 69.1% versus a 12%. Our body weight reduction of at least 15%, we had 50.5% versus 4.9%. The waist circumference, we had a loss of 13.54 centimeters versus 4.13 centimeters. The systolic blood pressure, we had a decrease in 6.16 um, mmHg versus 1.06. The SF36 score was a 2.21 versus 0.41. The IWQOL light CT score was a 14.67 versus 5.25. As far as safety outcomes, so the adverse effects reported in the semaglutide group was 89.7% versus the 86.4% in the placebo group. Now these numbers were very, um, not very significant as far as they were both very close to each other. But the most common side effect with uh, seen with this was the gastrointestinal related, um, such as nausea, diarrhea, constipation, or vomiting. This was experienced more in the semaglutide group with a 74.2% compared to the placebo group, which was 47.9%. So uh, the serious side effects that were reported in the semaglutide group um, was 9.8% versus the placebo 6.4%. And lastly, there was one death reported in each of these groups, so one death in the semaglutide group as well, for, as, well as one um, death in the placebo group. Uh, discussions, discussion and conclusions. So as far as the author's discussion and conclusions, um, and so on, and they did say that semaglutide 2.4 mg sub Q once weekly was shown to have a positive impact on weight loss in obese or overweight patients whom are not diagnosed with diabetes. Many outcomes were proven to aid in obese, in obese patients compared to the placebo group, such as a greater percent change of weight, weight loss, reduction in weight circumference, reduction in systolic blood pressure, and improvement on the physical scoring tests. The side effects experience were already assumed with the knowledge behind this class of drug and safety was consistent with the previous trials. The current GLP-1 um, receptor agonist that is approved for weight loss is liraglutide, which showed less efficacy in comparison to the semaglutide. Overall, semaglutide had shown positive results of 86% losing 5% or more of weight with an average of 14.9% loss. As far as my personal discussion and conclusions, so semaglutide was proven in three different trials that were completed to have a significant impact on the loss of weight and as well as other secondary outcomes in comparison to the other current regimens that do exist these days. Uh, one limitation I would like to research more in depth would be the individual's lifestyle modifications. It was discussed about their diet, how they were given a diet plan and an exercise and recommended um, amount of hours to be physically active. Uh, but it was not got, gone further in depth. Uh, one thing you typically see with uh, obese patients or weight loss is um, diet does make a huge impact. So one thing I would like to redo the trial with and just um, look further into depth would be when is the patient eating their total caloric intake um, as far as like carbohydrates, just all the other nutritional factors, um, just to kind of compare that and to see the difference between each patient. Um, uh, along with the, the diet and the amount of exercise, I'd like to also look at their heart rate during this time and the specific weight changes as the weeks go by, not just at the end of the marker. 
Uh, but yes, overall improvement was seen, um, but more research could be done um, looking at the bigger focus on what the patient is eating, trying to keep them all on the same diet, and to see a less possibility um, of modification between each group. Uh, and or we just want to try to keep them all on the same um, overall the board. So yes, semaglutide has proven to show the biggest effect to this day from what I have researched, and I would recommend to use it in practice from what I've seen so far. So some strengths that I did see within this um, within this article, uh, I did see a large sample size. There was adherent population, so the population was very adherent to using this medication um, because the people that were um, in this trial were very adamant and very looking forward to trying to actually lose their weight. Um, there was a high percentage of population completing the trial. Uh, this, so um, typically you do lose a lot of patients within a trial, but this one did have many actually complete all the way through. And the trial was a shorter duration, so that it aid in the um, strengths. Uh, we did exclude type 2 diabetes, and then the population had a greater desire to lose weight, like I said, in comparison to the general population of obese patients. Some limitations that I kind of discussed earlier include like the lack of the background for each patient's lifestyle management changes, as well as the lack of discussion behind any coexisting conditions that they currently have. As far as application to the clinical practice, uh, semaglutide can be given to patients in, uh, in patients who are obese or overweight and do not have type 2 diabetes, but it is very important to go ahead and continue the lifestyle modifications as well as first, since that is still currently first line, in order just to lose weight and improve health conditions. I hope this was helpful, and if you have any questions, please let me know. Thank you so much for listening.